We've been on quite a journey, haven't we, for several weeks watching The Acolyte, or as I call it, The Crapolite, a Disney Plus exclusive. Uh, we're on episode five. This is an episode that promises to be dark, gritty, it's got a lot of lightsaber action, we're gonna get a reveal of who the villain is. It's a big episode. And I'm here to break it all down in spoiler fashion, so if that interests you, and you're dead inside like I am, let's go on this journey together. Come on! Before I regale you with tales of whimsy and wonder, do me a favor, grab your blaster, shoot that subscribe button so you don't miss a single breakdown video for me. Plus, I do movie reviews here. It's, it's Adam Does Movies, so there's movie breakdowns, movie reviews, roasts, rants, everything movies, baby. And now on to the show. Last week, we left off with OSHA's Eleven getting absolutely bodied by Darth Gimp. And this week promises to have what will surely be the greatest lightsaber battle of all time ever. And wouldn't you know it, this episode fires up on all cylinders. With Osha popping up from the ground for the 50th time. Seriously, we're only five episodes deep. I've seen Osha spazzily sit up from sleep. I don't even know, countless times at this point. It's getting absurd. She trips over her own stupidity next to a fallen Jedi. And off yonder, we see what is either a rave happening in the woods or a good old-fashioned Jedi throwdown. She investigates. Gimp Vader takes a slice out of Master Zoolander right before making short work of a couple other Jedi dipshits. Orca shoots a whale sonar at him. It surprisingly does nothing. Meanwhile, Maya ransacks dead budget Chewbacca's place, finding his trusty saber. Squid Games enters the arena. And just before something interesting happens, there's that trusty title card to ruin it all. Every time something great's gonna happen in this show, which is rare, but on occasion it happens, it is always ruined by a cutaway to something else. And this happens constantly in this episode. And to this episode's credit, it's easily the most entertaining of the five so far, because there's a lot of duels going on. And there are some pretty slick moments. I'm not going to pretend that there's not. I'm not going to be one of those people that just rages and hates on everything. There were genuinely some cool moments, some small moments in a empty shell of a show. And when you have a budget of $180 million, I would sure as shit hope so. Master Zoolander is going to escort Osha back to the ship so Squid Game can take care of business. Soul says to the Gimp, you carry a Jedi weapon, but you are no Jedi. I like that. Pump the brakes. We got a good old-fashioned cat fight. And then the cat fight. Jedi face paint fights Maya. There are back and forth duels taking place. The camera has ADD, doesn't know who to focus on. Got these Jedi fights going back to back. We going back to back. These fights last for 10 seconds. There's a couple flourishes, some swirls, some twists with a kiss, and then they're undercut with dialogue. They're so short-lived and we cannot focus on one thing to get invested in what's happening. I'm not even sure why Maya's fighting to begin with. It sounded like she was gonna join the cause, be with her sister, but maybe she just wants her sister and not the Jedi. Either way, I've lost all interest in that storyline. Finger Paints appears to be a worthy fighter. Busting out some very impressive swordplay. In fact, she has the best choreography of the bunch. Props to the actress. I mean, I feel nothing, but I'm sure there's someone out there that really is eating this up. There's that one person out there that's just all in. You know what it is? It's the music and how unremarkable it is. This is a franchise that's been pinned with some of the best music in the business, such iconic scores. And here it just feels like an afterthought, just kind of like subtly in the background. Where's the duel of the face? Where's that? It's just very like, I don't like it. I don't care about it. I mean, it's that and the fact that all joy has left my body years ago and all that's left is a used up husk of a man. And the word man is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, considering I'm wearing a Wolverine t-shirt surrounded by a bunch of memorabilia and nostalgia. Let's continue. We have a pretty slick kill here, plus a villain reveal. Bob Ross face gets three hole punched to death. She died admirably by Mos Eisley Miller. That's right, Ezra Miller at home is actually Gimp Vader. And I guess he was another ex-Padawan or ex-Jedi. I, I don't know, they know him, they know this clown. But why male models? Asks Master Zoolander before getting his neck snapped. K.O. Soul gets the best shot in the film, walking like a baller towards the camera. Force pulls his saber up without even looking. He no-scopes it. 
It's awesome. I loved it. And he makes short work of Isley Miller, but he stopped just before decapitation. Short for decapitation. <clears throat> Osha motherly interrupts Squid Game right before he's about to finish the task. Because of all the dumb Jedi rules that have been infused in this society for many a year, he is unable to kill him because he's unarmed. You can't, you can't take down an unarmed foe or some dumb logical bullshit. So using a loophole, she kisses her pet robot friend goodbye, says, I love you, little robot, and then chucks it at the back of Moe's Isley Miller. It starts lighting up, which I guess is different than all the lightsabers that were lighting up, because this calls upon the bug bat creatures. They start taking him out. I'm sorry, what? How is this any different than just straight up killing him with the lightsaber? You're killing him either way. It's just this whole cheat code where you're not directly doing it. You're indirectly killing him. It's so stupid and even more dumb. These two idiots watch as Isley Miller gets lifted off the ground as he's cutting down the bat bugs and they pull him away. Yeah! And they just casually watch and then forget about it instantly. Well, that just happened. So how are things? It's so ridiculous. They don't even track him down. They don't know if he's dead or not. It's just, eh, it's, he's off camera now. So we can't, he, he stage exited left. We can't follow anymore. <laughs> Shenanigans. I'm also going to go out on a limb here and say he's not the main villain. He's an apprentice and the main villain is, of course, a strong female lead. And for Disney Star Wars... It's about time. You just know it is. And there was some really ham-fisted on-the-nose dialogue earlier from, I don't know if it was Osha or Maya or Mia, Mama Mia. It doesn't matter. One of them said that the mother has the power to do some cool trickery using the Jedi Force, or I guess they call it threads or yarn or some sort of Joanne Fabric equivalent. And so, yeah, she's obviously going to be the one in charge. She's going to be the, uh, the master here. The Sorceress Supreme. The Taco Supreme. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Let's keep going. Ocean Spray is troubled by something Gimp Vader said before he was lifted out of the scene. And it's that she shouldn't trust these guys, especially Master Soul. But before Soul can say anything, he's blasted by that same sonar that did nothing earlier to the Gimp. It definitely affected Soul, even though Soul appears to be stronger and better at fighting in the Force. Here, how do none of these dumbass Jedi not sense anything happening around them. They don't know when a threat is there. They don't know where this master Sith thing hovers down. There was like a baker's dozen of these Jedi. None of them felt a disturbance. All right, he's knocked out. T and Tamara have a loving embrace. Looks like they're gonna be sister sister after all. Girls get it done sort of thing, but nope. We got another double cross. Osha cannot let Maya get away with her bad deeds, her dirty deeds done dirt cheap. She's going to turn her in. But then nope again. Maya gets the upper hand, takes out her sister with a, like a little baby force push, and it knocks her out. And in Maya's infinite wisdom, she remembers watching Alien Coven shit, that terrible alien movie. And at the end of that film, the robot cuts his hair so he can look like the other version of himself, his twin. And that's what she does. She gets down in the dumbest pose I think I've ever seen ever in anything. Looks like a complete fucking idiot. Cuts up on her hair. There's so much pageantry with this woman. Who's she trying to impress in this sequence? No one's gonna cut their hair like this. Let me get down in this almost sexualized pose. I look really cool doing this and vroom. And now this is the only way I can achieve climax. Again, we've established the Jedi are dumb as a box of rocks. No one's going to be any of the wiser that she's traded places. No one's going to be any of the wiser that she just pulled a parent trap. Actually, the Star Wars equivalent of Niffler knows what's going on. His nose doesn't lie. What an absolutely disgusting abomination of a character. That thing is fugly beyond all belief. Shocker! Gimp Vader lives! They really had me going for a second. I thought for sure those bug bat things had the best of him, considering we just saw him go toe to toe with a bunch of Jedi Masters and survived pretty much unscathed. But yeah, this is going to be what takes him out, is what I thought. This is going to be the end of him. Osha meets up with Soul. Uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark that that's actually Maya. Uh, 
I, I think that's it's supposed to be obvious. If it's not, it, it sure as hell is coming off that way. And the episode winds down with the Gimp finding Osha on the ground, who he assumes is Maya. Maybe it's Maya. Maybe it's Maybelline. Who knows anymore? We'll find out next week, I'm sure. He utters a bunch of nonsense that I had to rewind three times because he talks like he has several dicks in his mouth. He's like, mm -hmm. spoiler, it wasn't worth rewinding. It's, it's completely nothing. And that's what this show is to me. And that's why I continue to watch because I'm a sucker for misery. All right, those are my thoughts. That's the spoiler breakdown in episode five of The Crapolite. It was better than the last couple episodes, but that means very little at this point. Who knows where things go next week? Maybe we get a manicure using the lightsaber. <laughs> Maybe we get to see a full-blown wax with the lightsaber. <laughs> Only time will tell. And some of these mysteries will be revealed that aren't really mysteries at all because they seem incredibly obvious. Let me know your thoughts, though. Do you watch this? Did you like it? Are you still fully invested? Or are you like me and uh, Star Wars has been dead for quite some time? And... I, I don't really know what I'm doing with my life anymore, but people seem to enjoy the suffering. And so I continue to suffer for you. Let me know. Please like the video. Again, I would love if you subscribed. Bust out that lightsaber. Cut down on the subscribe. It costs you nothing. It's free of charge. If you want to spend a little money, you could throw a couple dollars as a super thank you on this video. You could join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or become a join member right here on YouTube via the join button. Lots of ways to support. There's perks, of course, but really you're helping me achieve my dream, which is to suffer a little bit more each week watching this show, reviewing movies, and just having a good time doing it. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. May the force get a little less forced in the future. Take care.